Welcome to the Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce Let's Talk Business podcast. Um, this morning, I am very pleased to have with me Bishop Lloyd Jernigan. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing there? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. We got to kind of ring out a little bit because of the rain. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good. Um, so before we get started, we're going to go ahead and thank our sponsors. Southwest Airlines is a proud air travel sponsor of Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. We'd also like to thank Primacore Business Solutions. So, oh, this is cool. It's Friday. Oh my gosh. It's been a long, a long week. How's your week been? Uh, busy. Back and forth uh, over the road and uh, trying to put some things together. So, it's been busy. Well, that's pretty good. So, tell everybody who's listening um, who you are and what you do. I'm Bishop Lloyd Jernigan. I'm the owner of PO Consultants, LLC. Uh, we are a general contractor. We provide various services, debris removal, design bill. Uh, we're also doing some property preservation work. Uh, we have uh, soil remediation contracts with Department of Labor. And uh, we have a MATOC that we just, multiple award task order contract that we just bid it on for the Department of Veteran Affairs. And we're pretty sure we're going to get one of the nine contracts. So we're looking to do some things uh, over in Lake Charles as well once the storm passes. But we do have some work with the CDBG. Uh, disaster recovery with the city of Houston for the rebuild program. We're doing some of that work as well. That is awesome. So what? Uh, so what's your position with the uh, chamber? With the chamber, I am the vice president of Tri County uh, Regional Black Chamber of Commerce for Region One, which is North Harris County, uh, all of Montgomery, and Liberty. Awesome. I think you guys are going to be doing great work in that area for sure. Oh yes. Oh yes. We're looking to do some big things and uh, try to help some other minority companies too. Uh, reach their goals. I think that's awesome. So, um, because you're because you're a board member, <laughs> and, or a VP, you're board a VP, yes. VP of that region. Yes. Oh, I forgot board member. Okay, so look, there's all these different groups of people that we have to tap into. <laughs> Got to look out, look out. So, um, you're going to be scheduling your meet and greet pretty soon here. Yes, that's in November. It looks yes. like November the seventh will be the first Saturday in November. So why is a meet and greet good for your for your region? This gives uh, the the various persons who have organization or who are thinking about starting a company uh, within that region to kind of come together up under one umbrella, uh, sit down and talk about the various opportunities that uh, we can afford them with in terms of moving their organizations forward. Uh, a lot of times people want to go into business, but they're not quite sure what steps to take. Uh, they're not when you start talking about the certification programs, they don't know where to start at in getting the certification, what documents are required. Yes. And so we want to create a uh, just create an opportunity for people to come together as one, sit down and talk about what the chamber can offer them, how it can benefit them, and some of the reasons why they would want to be a part of the chamber. I think that's really good because I've been to one and I'm gonna my intention is to actually go to the other ones that are being um that are being scheduled now. Yes. But um the ones that I did go to, I did recognize that a lot of a lot of um, people in the community, um, the ones who are business owners, they are very apprehensive yes. to join um, communities like this one. Yes. And I think it has a lot to do with some of their experiences, and we never want to negate anyone's experience. Yes. We acknowledge it to be what their what it was was their experience. Yes. But my experience with the chamber is not equivalent to the experiences that other people have had with other chambers and yes. things like that. Yes. And I think it's always really good for people to have an opportunity to come and visit and have a conversation with people who have had success inside the chamber. Yes, I, I would agree. I mean, I think in life you're always going to have some ups and downs, some things that don't go the way that you you know necessarily plan for them to go. But you should use that experience as a stepping stone and not as you know an opportunity to kind of cast you aside. Uh, at the chamber, we're here to help you, you know, first determine what your goals are, mm -hmm. uh, give you a course of action to help you reach your goals, and then give you build the necessary tools around you to make sure that you can accomplish that goal. Well, I know, right? Because membership has its maybe wait 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 membership has its um, privileges, privileges yes. and responsibilities that's correct and I think it's really important and I can keep saying that you know with every board member, every person <laughs> that shows up here I'm like well you know we have to do that because yes. I think a lot of people believe that oh you're gonna help me scale my business 
I'm going to join here. I'm going to I met you at the meet and greet. I'm going to join this business and I'm going to go and you're going to you're going to scale my business. Yes. Wrong. Yes, that's correct. The chamber is not here to scale anyone's business. That's the correct. chamber is here to provide you important information yes. in order for you to be successful in your business. Yes. So the privileges are 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 depending on what you're going after. So that's, that's correct. certification. That's correct. Building your business bu building your business plan, navigating the business process. Um, access to funding, you know, so there's various things that they had that those are privileges, yes. but the responsibility is 100% yours as a business owner as to how you will use those privileges in order to help scale your business. That is correct. You, you have to care enough about your own idea, your own dream to want to put the work in. Mm -hmm. um, you should never give that responsibility to any other third party. That, that responsibility solely belongs to you as the driving force behind your idea. If you don't care about your idea, why should anybody else care? About right. <laughs> so that is absolutely. I agree with that because it's it's my vision, my yes. business, my vision. So yes. I have to be responsible for making my vision a reality. Yes. But the thing about it is, when you have supporting community and supporting people around you who believe in your vision, yes. they will hundred percent get behind you and help you to scale your business That's as true. long as you are the. What is what do the, the ship people you know the stern the yeah. helm the helm yeah you at the helm you know? <laughs> you're the one that has to do that right that's right that's so exactly that's how right. that works I that's like it so what role um, does a vice president play in the region so the purpose of the vice president is to identify those various businesses that you know need help or those persons who are desiring to start a business or having some challenges with their business and uh, bring them into one umbrella where we can advise them. Uh, hey, this is what the, I'll be doing is presenting you with an opportunity and with the tools. You have to make the decision that you want to, you know, launch in the direction that we're going. Uh, we're going to give you our mission statement, uh, which is provide you with the necessary tools in order for you to be successful in the business endeavor that you want to go into. Mm -hmm. But unless you are, you, you, you need to be sold on the idea that there's going to be work involved. Um, that there are certainly things that only you can provide in terms of your documentation, the history, um, you know, really help you form your idea. And the other thing that the Chamber does and, and that I do specifically is trying to recruit those businesses that are in my region that say, hey, you know what, I, I, I see what you all are doing. I understand now from having come to the meet and greets, this will work for me. I need, I need help in these different areas. Okay, mm -hmm. and what we will do is sit down and do an analysis with you of your business and of your idea and then help you determine what things you really, really need and then show you the tools that you need that you have access to that will help you accomplish that. Why wouldn't anybody want to join a community like that? If you want to be successful, you're going to have to have some help. <laughs> you... This is true yeah. because we are not an island. Yes. We, so regardless of what business we have, <laughs> regardless of whether or not it's technology, whether or not it's um, building a building, yes. construction, anything, at the end of the day, if you don't have a customer come in, if you don't have someone to pay you yes. to do what you do, you 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 don't have a business. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> so every so you're not an island. You always need a person. So it's yes. just that and we run into tons of people yes. who do not add value. Yes. But that doesn't mean that they did not they did not do what they came to do. That's correct. That is correct. You know, there's strength <laughs> in I think one of the things that we try to share with folks is that there's strength in numbers. Yes. Uh, so you, you may not necessarily have a particular skill set for accounting, but the person that's in the group mm -hmm. may have that skill set and you can barter. You know, whatever your skill set is, you can do a trade-off with that person, and y'all can help one another that way. And so, you, you know, when you're building a community, it, it's going to take everybody in the community to make things go. Uh, yeah, okay, so I like that, because I keep telling, like, my social media, it starts with us. Yes. That's one. Hashtag, it starts with us, just remember that. And then the other one is um, a community. Yes. So I believe that, I believe in the community, because m when I was younger, um... Yeah, I got in trouble a lot, <laughs> but by the neighbor, <laughs> not by my family. The neighbor will run to my family and I get trouble twice, right? Yes. So that's community. Yes. But without that community, there wasn't, you know, um, we weren't, we didn't have, my parents, my mom didn't have extra eyes. Yes. 
without the community, right? Yes. So if the community was able to come to her and say, hey, we're concerned about A, B, and C, yes. then she can go ahead and say, let me put some parameters around that to solve that problem or that's your right. concern. That's correct. And that's what we have to think about in business. Business is a community effort. Right. So if the community doesn't buy from you, then that means that your community is setting, is, it's a plan to, for you to fail. That's correct. And so I think it's really important that people want to join or be a part of something that's willing to support them where they want to be and support their vision. That's correct. That they have to be willing to go and do it. That's I think correct. that's pretty cool. I like. I was like, wow. I mean, that's pretty nice. You do an analysis and you go through that. Why are we not? And recruiting into a community is important. Yes. So explain the recruiting part. I mean, I understand. I mean, a little bit of what you just said, but yes. explain a little bit further about the recruiting. So on the recruiting side, as I said, there are a number of people who have various businesses um, that uh, they, they really don't know what to do with the business. They don't know how to move the business forward. Uh, my job is to try to identify those persons, especially those that fit uh, within our niche. Uh, try to identify those persons. Say, hey, you know, uh, we have some tools over here. We have some value added. Uh, opportunities for you. You want to do some federal contracting, state contracting, uh, you want to go after some private contracts. Those things we can help you do. However, there's some preparation that needs to occur first. Right. You know, we, we run across people that still don't have a, a bank account for the business, mm -hmm. you know, don't have the proper tax ID number. The business is not set up properly. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those things have to be addressed because we got to make sure that before you go to the table to get a contract that you are healthy. Yes. We find some businesses that have some small contracts, but they want to go after the larger contracts. They don't feel like they're capable of, of doing it because of their financial capital or financial worth at that point. There are ways to group you together with maybe some other team members within the organization that can help you pull those contracts down and then all of you can grow a little bit. Right. Okay. And so I, I truly believe in H. Ross Perot theory, which is you don't have to know everything. But you need to surround yourself with people that know things that you don't know. If you're the smartest person in your circle, your circle's too small. <laughs> you know, your circle's too small. You need another circle. I understand that. That's for sure. I, I love that. And so the point is that um, the collective, yes. we, have, we have more power than we give ourselves credit for. Yes. $1.2 trillion in buying power. Yes says that we set the tone for how successful or how not successful we're going to be. That is correct. That is correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in if we can finally figure out yes. if you can tap your friend. So I'm talking looking listen to all these people who are listening right now. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> tap your friend yes. and tell them we have more power than what what is being told to us. Yes. What is being poured into us. Yes. Understand we can control that. So yeah. being a part of somebody like I would love to have come to you and be like, okay, well, this is what I want to do. And you'd be able to say, okay, well you put all these pieces together. We yes. know we can get you where you're going. Yes. And the great thing about the chamber, Tri County Regional Black Chamber, is the fact that um twelve counties are being serviced. Yes, that's correct. And each one of those each one of those regions have a VP that is accessible to That's those correct. areas. That's correct. And the great part about that is your accessibility actually gives them visibility where they would not have normally had it. That is correct. That is correct. Because people will come to the chamber, they send information to the same chamber, they send opportunities to the chamber, and guess what? We want to push those opportunities to our members. Right. So that's why it's important to become a member of a chamber, um, build alliances, um, when you go in, instead of you going in as just you know a single individual or one small company going in to go after an opportunity, it's a whole lot better if you go in 10 companies mm -hmm. going after that opportunity. And you say, oh, man, I'm not going to make any money. Yes, you will. Mm -hmm. Because you can go after larger opportunities when you have more people at the table. Right. And you have a stronger voice. Knowledge is power. Yes. And a lot of the reasons that we are not able to tap into some of the opportunities is that we just don't have the knowledge. We don't know how to do it. And uh, not only will you get the knowledge here with the chamber, you're going to get some wisdom about how to go about implementing the knowledge that you have. Uh, you're going to also be pointed in the direction of other opportunities that you're not even aware of yeah. that are available to you. Absolutely. It's like I, 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 um, I actually look at it as a relay race. Yes. Right, a relay race. So when we're all out there training to run this race, mm -hmm. we have to we we jog and we run in 
by ourselves for the most part right. and then we start to run with a couple other people who right. run with us right. right but in a relay race you run that race you run your leg at a race mm -hmm. but then when you're done with your leg you have to pass it off to someone else yes who's yes. willing to continue that race that's and in right. order for you to get the best time in order to win the race that's correct and so if you think of it you're getting started the first leg of the race is you start to build your business and get it all straightened together yes. right and you have your vision you build it out and you say okay this is what i want to do yes and then when you go and do that then you have to go to someone else you have to build a team yes. and the team your relay team is very simple so who's going to take the baton next in order yes. to get you to the next level yes. now keep in mind as the first leg of the race doesn't mean you're out of the race yes that's great that, that great. means that you have passed it on to yes. someone else to take you to another level while yes. you continue to build next to that yes so now you have somebody you know what is somebody's um land the fountain land the, the foundation, foundation mm -hmm. so you can continue to run that is correct that and is then correct. when that person is done with their leg you will then pass the baton off to the next person that's correct people that's have correct. to think about it that way well you know like i said a lot of times it's it's exposure if you haven't been exposed to success um you don't know what success looks like you might have an idea of your mind in your mind of what you believe success is, mm -hmm. but I, I really like the the uh, you know the the movie that Michael Jordan put together, because oftentimes when people saw Michael Jordan on the court and you know saw all the exploits You're that he talking did, about, okay, you know that's that's all they thought there was. So you see guys in the gym they trying to do everything that Michael do, but what they weren't exposed to is all of the quiet alone hard work time that was put in where nobody was looking yes he was preparing himself for the moment and when preparation meets opportunity that's where success occurs yes oh you know what i never thought about it that that one because i watched all i binge watched that that was insane yes but yes. when you watch it and he he would just get going laugh he's like they just didn't understand yes and he didn't understand but at the end of the day he rec he seen a bigger picture. He had a vision for his life yes. that he knew he had to march to a certain beat in order yes. to meet it. Yes. And the other part to Michael is when when he starts off in his years of playing, he's getting beat up. He, he's taking mm -hmm. a beating, but he started to recognize that he need he personally needed to invest some more into himself yeah. in order to get to the next level. And so he began, you know, after they would have lift before practice, they'd have practice, and he'd go back in the gym when everybody else was going home, and he's lifting. It's going to take that same kind of a mindset when you're building your business. While everybody else is having fun and doing their own thing, uh, you, you, we have to put time into our business model and invest time into ourselves. There are some seminars you need to attend. And a lot of these things are free. They're online. <laughs> Webinars that you can take a look at, you know, yep. to understand how business works, to get a good full picture of okay, this is what I'm getting ready to delve into. I want to make sure I've got a good working knowledge of how these pieces come together. Uh, down the road, as you're growing the business, there are other things that you could do, all kinds of small business classes that you can take. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you want to do to educate yourself on the process. We're here to help you, yeah. but I, I don't want people to have the, the misconception that we're here to do everything for, for you. you. Correct. But I'm going to go back to Michael Jordan as being an example yes. Yes. because here's the other thing. He did something that everybody trashed him for. Yes. When he moved from basketball mm -hmm. to baseball, mm -hmm. they thought he had lost every yes. marble in his head, yes. right? They trashed him anywhere yes. and everywhere they could. Mm -hmm. But he went and did what he wanted to do. That's right. And he re and, and I, I, I love that part when I was like, I didn't realize the conditioning was different for mm -hmm. each sport, mm -hmm. right? And so I watched that and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. So he had to, he when he came back to basketball, he had to recondition his body. Yes. So he had to work harder. That's correct. Than That's it correct. was to make it a baseball body. That's correct. And now, the point I was trying to make for that was the fact that he pivoted when everybody said no. Yep. He quit. He didn't quit. He said, I'm going to retire right here mm -hmm. on my terms. Yep. And I'm going to go and do what I want to do. Yes. Because that's something I see for myself. Yes. And against everyone who told him this was not a good idea, he mm -hmm. still was able to do it. That's correct. So that, what, that spoke volumes because there are many times that a lot of business owners will say, my family has said, don't do that. Yeah. 
my friends won't support me. Yes. My community doesn't doesn't believe in me. Yes. If Michael Jordan followed the followed the drum of someone else's uh, somebody else's band, yes. he wouldn't be where he, he is, is today. today. That is correct. That and is so correct. people have to take a look at I like the fact that we talked a little bit about the fact that nobody ever seen how hard he had to work to get where he was yes. going. They just assumed at some point in time success happened because yes. he wanted it to happen. Yeah. There's a lot of work that went into that. That's right. And people That's have right. to be mindful that the story that you see and read on, the stories you see on TV or the stories you read on the internet or in the paper right. is only half of the story. That is correct. That is correct. You know, a lot of times people don't realize how many times people have, quote unquote, failed mm -hmm. before they succeeded. In other words, they just never gave up. Mm -hmm. um, you have to want it that bad. You have to want that level of success that bad that mm -hmm. you're willing to stay up at night when everybody else is sleeping and get up early and miss out on some other, you know, social opportunities and those kinds of things in order to nurse your... If you want your child to be born and be healthy, you're going to have to put some time into yourself, into that into that baby, into your body, to make sure that you are ready uh, when it comes time to deliver that baby. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with the business. You, you've you got to take time out on the front end to really let us work with you, tell you what needs to be done, point you in the right direction, and you go and do those things. And then you come back and you give us, hey, listen, I, I did this. I ran into this issue. I ran into that issue. We walk you yeah. through. And all along the way, you're learning the process. You're learning the process. Not you join the organization and tomorrow you're an overnight success. That's, that's not how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. You're going to come into the organization. We're going to assess you and tell you what things you are missing what things uh, you need to do to kind of get yourself positioned to participate in the opportunities. Once you are positioned for the opportunities, we're going to walk, hand walk you to how to get those opportunities pulled down. Once you get started pulling those opportunities down, we have alliances are being set up. And those alliances are there as a group. We go collectively as a group to work on those opportunities and make sure that everybody is successful that is on the team. Right, I like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about the lines, but I'm going to touch on one thing: failure. Yes. <clears throat> Here's the one thing about the word failure. I think it is a great. It's a. It's an understanding. It's someone else's perception of what happened for you. Yes. Failure is not. Failure is not real. Yes. For me, I need to, and I have to remind myself, from an engineering background, mm -hmm. failures are not failures. Yes. They're lessons. Yes. And as soon as people start to say, "I have my men and my max." Yes. That is, men is do nothing. Max says you've hit the you've hit the ceiling that says this is as far as I can go. Yes. But unless you test both of those limits, you have zero idea of where they are. That's correct. So That's failure correct. is not necessarily a failure. It's yes. a lesson to understand what you need to do in order to be successful. That is correct. That is correct. And so I really, I really, really, really encourage anybody mm -hmm. who's listening or going to watch this on Wednesday yes. to actually listen and pay attention to the word failure and who's giving it to you. Yes. Because yes. failure, you know, people are saying failure is not an option. Yeah. If you're not willing to learn, yeah. failure is always going to be your option. That's right. And so I just believe that um, if I if I was a fail, I didn't fail at, at working. Mm -hmm. I just became part of the unemployable group, but <laughs> <laughs> just became, I was no longer unemployable. Um, but um, I didn't fail at working for other people. Yes. I learned that I could no longer participate in someone else's vision the yes. way that they were doing it. So yes. that wasn't my failure. It was just an, an awareness that happened. It says I've reached a limit in which I can no longer move forward. Yeah, you know, failure, you, you can look at it a couple ways. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity to, like you said, learn. Uh, it's also an opportunity to start over. Mm -hmm. um, with each point that you go through where you experience a setback, that setback is there to be a setup for you. Yeah. And as long as you have the mindset that, okay, you step back, you look at it, you evaluate, okay, what did I do wrong? What can I do better? And you go, the only difference between uh, a person of success and a person who considers themselves to be a failure is the person of success just never stopped. <laughs> they, they never stopped trying. They, nev yes. they, they never gave up. And, um, you know, as long as you have the mindset, okay, you know, I'm going to go to Chicago, John's going to Chicago. Now, John may go, you know, straight up uh, 45 and go. Uh, you may go to the East Coast and go. It doesn't matter how long it takes. The objective is to reach the goal, right. you know. Yes. And so you, you want to reach the goal. You want to make sure that you're stable when you reach the goal. Because a lot of people that are overnight successes don't last. 
Yes, they that flash of the pan. That's exactly right. They don't <laughs> last. But that person who puts in, takes the time to put in that hard work and build their business over time, you're going to know your business like the back of your hand. Uh, not only that you are building collaborative effort all around you, various people that have helped you along the way, and nobody is going to be successful without some help from other people, even people that you're not even seeing in your circle right now, mm -hmm. uh, that you don't even expect to be there. Those people will show up in your life at the right time to help you get to the next level. Yes, absolutely. And so that's why failure is good. This is a good conversation that we're having because you mentioned the alliance. Yes. And this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain once we start talking yes. why the failure ties into the alliance. Yes. <laughs> so the alliance. So um, Tri County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce actually have two new alliances that they have um, are they're beginning to roll out. Yes. And that's a trucker alliance and a contractors alliance. Yes. And so I'm gonna read the mission statement. A specific service program committed to acquiring and disseminating valuable business information, resources, and tools for independent trucking companies and contractors to have an immediate access to higher levels of contract awards, business training, and business funding. Yes. So I want to speak first on the Construction Alliance. That's the piece that I have. Uh, when you go after a, a construction contract, if you go after that's just a small mom power organization or even a trade company, i.e. electrical plumbing, you know, something along those lines, um, the amount of work that you can go after is going to be very, very limited. Uh, what we're doing is we're bringing in all of the construction contractors up under one umbrella. Mm -hmm. And we are saying to the organization, oh, you're looking for contractors? We already have them right here. There you go. Okay. And so when we go in to go after the contract, no, we don't need pieces of it. We would like to have the whole thing because we have all of our members that have the various trades and skill sets necessary to accomplish the job. So it makes it a lot easier when we're pulling down the set and the alliance is pulling down the, the opportunity versus me individually going after an opportunity on my own. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would be limited in terms of the financial capital that I could get, even just commanding the attention of the organization that I'm trying to do business with. They're going to listen to and operate differently with the Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce and its alliance mm -hmm. versus, you know, PL Consultants LLC just on its own. Right. And I think that that's really, I like, I like that. And so this is how the two, the two merge. Yes. <laughs> so as it, so if I had a trucking company and I am struggling to try to get a contract. Yes. And well, I can use contractors. I'll use contractors for you. So I'm a contractor. I, I, um, I, what am I doing? I'm laying concrete or mm -hmm. I don't know. Cause I don't know enough about any of these things. But anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm laying a foundation and I lay, I have a business, but it's not as successful as I need it to. And I yes. see contracts out there that I want to get and I apply for, but I always seem to be, I, I don't get the award. That's correct. Okay. In my mind as a contractor and my business, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Yes. What am I, why am I not getting that award? Yes. What T did I not cross? What I did I not dot? Yes. So then I say, I think, I believe I'm failing. Yes. yes. And the Alliance is actually saying, no, you're not failing. Yes. It's just that you don't, so there's various reasons why. Some of it is history. You don't have enough history. That's correct. In order to support. That's correct. You don't have the right documentation. So that's, that's certifications correct. in all of the areas in which you would, in which you would, um, which should apply to you. Yes. And then, um, and then just having a mentor at some point that's being able to guide you through that. Yes. So those pieces are missing, but unless somebody, unless I reach out and ask them right. as to why can I not accomplish that contract right. or why am I not getting that awarded contract, right. you will never understand that these are the three reasons why. Yes. And now this is an opportunity to say, we can help solve that because now as a general contractor, mm -hmm. I come to you and I say, okay, I want to, I want to lay concrete for you or whatever that's going to be. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay. I need you to do A, B, and C. Right. And when I do A, B, and C, when you do A, B, and C, come back to me. Right. And I do A, B, and C, and I mm -hmm. come back to you, and you say, I have a contract for you. Yes. And now your 80 million contract that you received as a general contractor has now turned into an opportunity to let my let my business shine yes. in a space that would not have normally been able to. That is correct. Past performance is a large reason why many of the contracting officers don't uh, award contracts uh, to some of the smaller companies. Uh, sometimes a smaller company gets in and they're so glad to have a contract, they're underbid to work. Mm -hmm. And so now you got the contract, but 
it's going to cost you so much to operate the contract, you can't make any money out of it, and so you're not successful in terms of being able to complete all the work. What we want to do is, you know, kind of move you away from that kind of a thinking and say, no, let us go in and pull the contract down. Then we're going to make sure we pull the contract down, the value of the contract, at a level where everybody can participate. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you start off, you may start off with a small piece, but guess what? That small piece has just built you some past performance. Yes. The next contract, you can do a little bit more. The next contract, you can do a little bit more. And so eventually you get to the point where you're trying to reach where you can really do some things now on your own because your company has grown enough. But what we want you to be able to do is reach back and get some of the other members who are now coming into the organization. Your concrete business has grown now. Mm -hmm. Now you can reach back and say, hey, look, you know, give me two or three of the alliance members. I've got a large contract over here that just came to me. Fine. We've got two or three members, and we want you to bring them along just like we brought you along. Right. And slowly over time, we get to a point where we have enough contractors so that they're calling us on a regular basis saying, hey, we like the work that you guys are doing. We like the way that yes. you all are operating. And th what the Alliance will also do is set up a management company because most of them don't have the ability to do certified payrolls and mm -hmm. do those various tasks that the city may ask for, the federal government may ask for. But with the management company, we can oversee that piece of the contracting for you so that you can concentrate on just getting the work done. Yes. Okay. That, I mean, this is awesome conversation. I'm like, <laughs> what? This is exciting. Because I think that the, that's, that's so true. A lot of people do not understand. And what we realize, once you realize um, what's happening out there and why people are not getting their awards and stuff, you have to figure out different ways that's that cool. actually meet them in the crazy that they... <laughs> that's that is correct. <laughs> the that sandbox correct. that they play in. Yes. Some sandboxes we don't want to go in. Right. Little That's correct. J little Johnny P in that one. I don't want to go over there. Right? <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but, there, but that's the sandbox where the contract is. Right. That's right? correct. So we have to find a way around that. And again, yes. it comes back to the to the power that we actually has collectively that yes. we are currently not utilizing. That is correct. And you know, you, you're always going to get more attention when there are more members mm -hmm. involved and when there's just, you know, just one person. Right. You, you can command a little bit more attention. And, uh, and we want to have an organized approach to going yes. after the contracting opportunity, not just willy-nilly going out there doing stuff. But when we go and really know what we're doing, uh, be able to show as a group and as a class that we really, no, 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 we, we know what we're doing. Yeah. Um, we're going to get this done. It's going to be done decent in order. And all of the people that are avoid a part of the process are professional in both their approach and their discipline in terms of getting the work done. Yeah, so what do you think about, or what what message, how would you communicate to those who would just sit back and say, I'll wait and see how well you do first before I join? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're going to always have what we call looky-loos, uh, you know, those people who will stand on the sideline mm -hmm. and, and uh, kind of watch to see what's going on. I, I, I think those people are necessary sometimes. Yes. Um, They're great cheerleaders, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are uh, the persons who will carry the message. You know, to make sure that other people, did you hear about so-and-so and so-and-so? And so? You oh, know, so they are your, yes, they are your, your, your best broadcasters are you, to get I the message out. I never and, thought uh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad news carries what? Carries fast, you know. Uh, goes around the world nine times before good news gets out of the bed. Oh, my god! So it, it, it's one of those things where you have to learn how to use everything around you. And those persons who would want to be on the sideline, that's okay. But for the people who, who really have made their mind up and have bought into the idea, those are the people who are going to be the first model of success. Yes. Okay. And so at least those people on the sideline can see a model of success and be able to try and emulate that model. Right. So we want to work with the people that want to get the work done. That's, that's the bottom line. I, I, you're better than me. So this is what I would say. Look here now. This is, so is a difference between being a cheerleader on the sidelines, but when we talk about double dutch, yeah. that's that one where you're just, with the two ropes are flying, yeah. right? And you're just like, okay, I got to find, I got to find a perfect time to jump in, right? Yes. Which is fine. But sometimes the perfect time was for when I learned double dutch, I jumped in and hit, got hit with the ropes. Yeah. But there's a very good reason why you need to get hit with the ropes because it shows a limit. Yeah. It shows where you have to enter. That's right. right. So sometimes we can enter over there where the where the um, where the one turner is going, mm -hmm. and the other times you can enter in the middle. Yes. But until you get hit with the ropes, yeah. 
you won't really understand where to enter. Yes. So for all those people who are sitting there waiting for all of us to be successful, yeah. you've just wasted yes. three months, six yes. months, and possibly years yes. waiting to see us become successful yeah. when you could have been walking right along with us yes. becoming successful just as well. Yes. What do you have to lose at this yes. point? You're already standing there, already standing there not making the money you want. Yes. Why would you not want to just go ahead and join, join to determine whether or not this is the right community for you to to become more successful than yes. where you were on the sidelines. Yes, and if nothing else, I would say at least come to the meet and greets. Meet and greets. Uh, con contact the broadcast and um, you know find out when the next meet and greet is. Show no, up go at to tcbcc.org. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, at least come and get some information, ask some questions from other people who are maybe in the same boat that you're in that are thinking about becoming members or thinking about starting their business, thinking about expanding their business, and you will see the value that is there. Um, you know, we, we want to help people, but of the many things that you can give a person, there's one thing you can't give them. You mm. cannot give them the desire. Yes. The desire they have to bring to the table. Absolutely. And so if you have the desire, we have all of the tools that you need to get to where you want to go. And understand the difference between a goal and an idea. <laughs> With a goal, you need to have a plan, a written plan that says, I'm at point A and I'm trying to get to point C. Uh, so I know that there's B in between. And here are the steps that I need to take to get to both B and C. Yes. Um, but an idea is, I'm just thinking about it. I, you know, I, maybe and someday I would like to. You know, those kinds of conversations. You have to move from that to really moving your, turning the idea into a goal and writing it down into a plan and then implementing the plan. 100%. Yes. 100% agree with that. Yes. And every time I think about this, you guys are so funny. But actually, Kelvin is the one who gave me that that visual of the people. I mean, everybody has a business. Yes. And the, he says the guy was riding his bike and pulling the lawnmower. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't yeah. know that that existed, <laughs> right? But when we were younger, my brother used to um, um, carry a weed whacker. Mm -hmm. So he would go and do lawn, lawn work in mm -hmm. those in those areas. The one thing about all of that was that from the concrete jungle, not a whole lot of lawn. Yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot of lawn out there. Yes. But he was successful because it actually, as a younger person, he figured out how to hustle to get where he wanted yes. to go. Yes. Those are the people we're looking for. Yes. Those are the people who actually have the desire and the drive right. and the willingness to go out and knock on doors right. or to do the hard work to build up everything. Right. Because after that, honestly, I don't think, I think he only worked for two people in mm -hmm. his whole entire life. Mm -hmm. He never worked really for anyone else. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't unemployable. He was just not willing to, right. he, he rather... He'd rather do his own thing. That's right. He'd rather um, make his own decisions. Mm -hmm. And that started when he was younger, carrying around that weed whacker. Yes. You know, that, that, that probably two to three different types of individuals that would want to go into business. One is a person who is working in a particular discipline, maybe an accountant or a plumber or something, for another major established company, has done this for a while, has gotten their finances now uh, to a point where... Uh, you know, they're ready to kind of launch on their own. They start a small business on their own while they're still working. Mm -hmm. Start a small business on their own. And once the income from that business eclipses what they're making on a regular job, then they slide over full time. And you also have persons who, uh, for whatever reason, got laid off or is no longer in the, in the job market. But they have all of these skills that they've been doing for major companies all these years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? If I can make a million dollars for XYZ company, I think I can do this for myself. Yes. I just need a little push. I need a little organization. I need a little help and, and you know, kind of bringing these pieces together. Uh, I know the discipline that I do, mm -hmm. but I don't know all of the other pieces on how to start a business. And so this is where, you know, Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce comes in. And uh, we're able to give you all of those things to help you make that idea turn into a business and then that business be successful. Yes, and I love this spot. This is for sure disseminating valuable information. Yes. yes. It's very important. I think that's I, I do. I, I love I love the fact that I was able <laughs> to join the chamber and I meet all of you guys. Because it's been a really good it's been a really good um well it's not been a year, but it's been a really good time here because yes. at the end of the day there were things there were gaps that I had and I already knew that I had them. Yes. But I couldn't but I didn't necessarily know where to fill them. Yes. 
And so by being able to come and have share in all of what's going on here, it actually allowed me to be able to say, okay, that gap is here. So let me fill it with this person. Yes. That gap is there. Let me fill it with that person. Yes. And I would not have normally found what I was looking for on my own because I was an island. Yes. <laughs> oh, I was an island and I wasn't willing to, to charter a boat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the other places it was not my I was like I'm not doing that I'm not I'm just not doing that well you know one of the questions that I get often is how do I know what my passion is oh you yeah know, how okay. do I know you'll always know your passion because your passion is that thing that you would do if nobody paid you a dime well that's what I do today <laughs> you know that that's your that is your passion yes. um, and and one of the things that you'll find when you find your passion you'll find your gifting um, it's just something about being in a zone where this is, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just enjoy it. If nobody paid me, nobody's looking, I, I will do this. Yes. That, that alone will help drive you toward the place where you want to go. That's me. That's uh, a good and thing. You know what? And thank you for that. Because I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I don't know how I'm supposed <laughs> to do it. And I will wake up. I wake up in the morning and I'm just like... Okay, so I have to do A, B, and C because this child is waiting for me and yeah. I gotta do this, that, and the other. And it doesn't feel overwhelmingly daunting. Yes. It just, it feels, it, when I don't do it, I feel like I did something wrong. Yeah. And then, and so now because of your explanation, I now understand that my passion lies where, where my business is. Yes. I'm trying to think of the disc jockey that just, uh, I think he's up for like a $120 million contract out of New York. Oh, really? Um, I can't think of the gentleman's name, but. It, it's like I said. It's it's finding your place in society. Yeah. Knowing what it is that you want to do, what you really really have a drive and a passion for, and then just get after it. Um, you know, one of the first things you can find anything on YouTube these days. Oh. So start studying. <laughs> I mean, start to really uh, study what it is that you want to do. You know, yeah. if you if you want to be good at, I don't care what sport it is, you need to study players that are what that good at the direction that you're trying to go or the effort that you're trying to launch. Or has the play, that actually plays the way you want to play. That's exactly right. Because the thing about it is that there's a lot, so all of the larger companies out there, mm -hmm. they were small at some point. That's correct. That's and correct. they and they didn't, they didn't follow the beat of the previous, com previous companies or the other giants, yes. they followed a formula. That's and correct. the formula is, the formula is what the formula is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of now how can you incorporate that formula in what you're doing in right. order to be successful. That's correct. And then sometimes, even when you're baking a cake, mm -hmm. you first of all, I didn't even know you put sour cream in pound cake. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'll never make I'll never make pound cake because I don't want to put sour cream in pound cake because it sounds very weird to me, right? Mm -hmm. But if I don't want sour cream in my pound cake, that means I have to find a, a, something else to That's take correct. its place. That's correct. So the formula is so a recipe for success mm -hmm is you take what works and then you find out what you don't like, remove that, replace it with something that works for you and right. move forward. That's right. But so if we talk about the banking system, you have multiple giants out there and they're, they're not, when you go there, go there, all their services are different. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. They, they provide you different, different products and services. Yeah but they're all still in the same industry. Mm -hmm. So just figure it out, figure out yes. what you want to do and take the recipe and say, I like this, but I don't like that and make the shift and change according to you and then yes. move it forward. Yes, and then identify your, your target market. I mean, you're certainly not trying to serve or sell to every single person that's out there. That's just unrealistic. But there is a certain segment of the population that wants what you're offering. Mm -hmm. And if you can identify that segment and market to that segment, and you're gonna need some help identifying that, that segment of people, but uh, market to that segment of people, you're gonna find the level of success that you're looking for. Maybe not the level of success that someone else has, but you have to determine what the level of success is for you. Yeah, I think that's really important. <laughs> I think this has been a great conversation. So before we wrap up, I'm gonna go, we're gonna talk about a little bit um, the meet and greet. Yes. Um, so the next meet and greet is October 24th, and that's Region 2. That's, that's right. um, So we want to make sure that we go ahead and encourage everyone to visit tcbcc.org and look for events, all events, and you're going to find um, you're going to find the meet and greet that is there yes. for Region 2, October October 24th. So that's coming up. Please mark your calendars and um, register now. Um, yours is coming up. Oh, there's another one, Regent 
there's another one October 31st. 31st. That's correct. So you want to be looking for that one because that one's getting ready to be placed on the website. Yes. Um, yours is going to be in November. We're not releasing a date yet because we got to make, make sure that that's good. So Region 1 is also yes. November. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for November the 7th in Region 1. Right, so mm -hmm. November the 7th. So look out for that. Save the date. We also have an inauguration in Jasper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot going on. And um, uh, you got a lot going on for for that. So there's an inauguration on in, um, November 14th. That's correct. Out there in Jasper. So yes. go ahead and visit because you're going to be able to see the VPs, yes. the board members, and advisory boards yes. members out there. And there's great, great, great things going on there. So that's Regent 4. Yes. Um, we also have the Alliance, the Trucking and the Contractors Alliance is being yes. rolled out for programming. Yes. So people need to be paying attention to that as well. Yes. And then we're also opening up the ability for people to go ahead and join us here on the podcast. Um, if you're a member, you can go ahead and pay for a spot to have your business showcased here. Yes. And then you can, and it'll actually be shown on Wednesday. So you can tape, you'll, we will record everything on Friday. Um, we're live Fridays, every Friday at 10.30 a.m. at gmtradio.com. Okay. Also, make sure that we go ahead and encourage everyone to download the GMT Radio um, app. Yes. They have a new app. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. You get to watch their programming. You get to watch previous programs, and you get to listen live and things like that. So go ahead and, and download the app. Yes. So Mr. Jernigan, Bishop, make sure you take a look at that. And so everybody, encourage everyone to visit visit tcbcc.org, Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce.org, and learn more about how you, too, can join this community of successful black people. <laughs> yes, we would love to have you. Love to have you. Right? Me. So just remember, I have to remind that. And you know what? One day I was sitting there, and I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. When the right connections matter, yes. connect to the right network. So then that's so, so, so important. I thank you so much for, your, for spending the um, time with me today. You're certainly welcome. Enjoyed it. Tell everybody how they can find you. I am, uh, you can find me at www.plconsultants with an S, LLC.com. Uh, my number is 832 212 1620. We're there to help you uh, any way that we can. Okay, so that's your Region 1 VP. Yeah. There you go. So um, we'll go ahead and thank our sponsors. So Southwest Airlines is a proud air travel sponsor of Tri County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. We'd also like to thank Premacore Business Solutions. Remember, everyone, go ahead and um, if you're looking at podcasts, television, or radio, head over to gmtradio.com and take a look at what he has to offer. This is a great location. You can come and get your um, get your message out, have um, have your own show, things like that. I mean, it's an awesome place. He's, yes, it is. I mean, I, I love his spirit. I do. <laughs> I really love his spirit. Thank you very much for allowing us to be here today. Um, nice. So, um, so everybody have a great and glorious weekend. Thank you very much for tuning in. And always remember, when the right connections matter, connect to the right network. Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. Everyone have a great day.